Hi everybody, it's Kenan back again with another reaction video for you guys. This time I'll be reacting to, it looks like a, a bunch of information that we didn't know about Halloween movies. So this is called 7 Halloween Things You Probably Didn't Know. Again, it's called 7 Halloween Things You Probably Didn't Know. Uh, this is done by a Cine, Cinefix, Fix. I'm sorry, Cinefix. And I'm going to react to this in a second. But you guys know what you need to do first. Please like, comment, subscribe. And definitely hit the notification bell for when I come out with new videos. Again, like, comment, subscribe, and definitely hit the notification bell for when I come out with new videos. Let's see these seven things that we did not know about, or probably did not know about. Here we go. It's the 40th anniversary of Halloween, and with the release of the new sequel, it's time to look back at the film that launched Jamie Lee Curtis's career. Yeah. Here are seven things you didn't know about Halloween. Okay. Probably. <laughs> Number one. Halloween was co-written by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, and damn near everything in the movie is named after something from their personal lives. Hmm, I know For that. instance, Haddonfield, Illinois was named after Haddonfield, New Jersey, Deborah Hill's hometown, hmm. and Smith's Grove was named after a town near where Carpenter grew up. Hmm. Laurie Strode was named after Carpenter's first girlfriend, and Michael Myers was named after the European distributor of Assault on Precinct 13 wow. as a sort of weird thank you. Sheriff Lee Brackett is a reference to writer Lee Brackett, hmm. who wrote Rio Bravo, a film that inspired Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13. Laurie and Tommy watched The Thing from Another World, one of Carpenter's favorite movies, and didn't he remake that movie a few years later? Mm -hmm. One of the best sci-fi movies ever, or something like that? <laughs> I don't know. Move. <laughs> Number two. Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho plays a major influence on Halloween, from the camera movements to creative bloodless murders. The homage doesn't stop there, though. Carpenter went so far as to cast his own Hitchcock blonde. Jamie Lee Curtis, whose mother Janet Lee, played the iconic Marion Crane in Psycho. <laughs> Casting Jamie not only paid tribute to Hitchcock's famous muses, but also launched the era of screen queens and final girls in the process. That's true. While Psycho redefined the horror genre for an entire generation, it seems only fitting that 18 years later, the next generation to influence horror movies was literally the next generation of leads. Hmm. And how's this for another Psycho reference? Donald Pleasance's Dr. Sam Loomis is named after John Gavin's character in the film. Bonus Hitchcock thing! Hmm. Three. Now you may already know that the infamous Michael Myers mask is actually a transformed $2 Captain Kirk Halloween mask. Oh, what you may not know okay. is that there were other options for the famous facade, such as President Richard Nixon, Mr. Spock, and the Emmett Kelly's Weary Willy clown mask. Hmm. The script specifically called for the pale, neutral features of a man weirdly distorted by the rubber, and Captain Kirk's expressionless face fit the bill. <laughs> Production gave the mask a makeover by teasing the hair, ripping off the sideburns, widening the eye holes, and spray painting it white to create one of the most iconic horror figures in movie history. And while William Shatner had no say in his contribution to the film, he has admitted that he's actually gone trick-or-treating with the infamous Michael Myers mask That's on. nice. Segway. Four. Speaking of transformations, at the time of filming, the Myers house was literally an abandoned house. Wow. Okay. With the film's small budget, finding the house was a Halloween miracle mm. by providing a proper spooky production value that the film literally could not afford. Mm. However, that meant that the opening tracking shot of the house had to be filmed on the last day. It took the crew all day to clean and paint the exterior of the house. Mm. Production could only afford to decorate what would be shown in the frame, meaning that the Panaglide operator had to be precise or else any movement in any other direction would show a dusty, broken down corner. Mm. Or a ghost of the last low budget film that used the house. Mm. Uh. Everybody knows the score. It's one of the most iconic pieces of music in movie history and it'd be hard to imagine the film without True. it. However, you may not know, it came after Carpenter screened the film to an executive who was not impressed with the film and said that it wasn't scary. So Carpenter played octaves on a piano using a 5-4 time signature his father taught him as a child and wrote the score in just three days. Wow. And later, the same executive told Carpenter the film was terrifying. <laughs> In the credits, Carpenter lists himself as the Bowling Green Philharmonic Orchestra, a reference to his hometown in Kentucky. But that's not the only place you can hear Carpenter's musical prowess in the film, though. The band playing in the car in this scene is his band, the Coupe de Vils, composed of himself, Nick Castle, and Tommy Lee. Hmm. Wallace, which is, boom, a two-part segue. Number six. 
Part one of the segue is about Carpenter's bandmate Tommy Lee Wallace, who was also the production designer on the film. With a $300,000 budget and a 21-day shoot, the filmmakers had to find creative ways to sell the story of a Halloween haunting. Amid a lot of usual budget shortcuts, like John Carpenter's own car doubling as the Strode's car here, maybe the biggest challenge for Wallace was that production took place in March in California. You can see green trees and palm trees in some of the shots. Okay. Wallace had to paint three trash bags worth of leaves brown and reuse them throughout the film, with crew scrambling to collect leaves after each cut. And I bet Wallace let Carpenter hear about what a pain in the ass that <laughs> was at the Coupe de Ville's next rehearsal. Here comes part two of that segue. Number seven. Five different people played the shape in the film. Wow. Two thirds of the Coupe de Ville's, including Nick Castle and Tommy Lee Wallace pulling double duty, Stuntman James Winburn, co-writer Deborah Hill, and actual actor Tony Moran. And all for different practical reasons. Nick Castle played the role through most of the film and had that specific body language that's made the shape so terrifying even all these years later. Tommy Lee Wallace, the production designer slash editor, oh by the way he edited the film too, stepped in during scenes where the shape had to break stuff because he was good at breaking stuff correctly on the first take. <laughs> Cheap movies can only afford to break stuff once after all. James Winburn was the stuntman who literally took the fall off the balcony after being shot by Dr. Loomis in this scene. Deborah Hill not only stood in for the shape in this shot, but she also lent a hand playing young Michael's, well, the hand in the opening sequence POV shot. And Tony Moran took the honor of being the face of Michael Myers for the few split seconds you can actually see it. This all just reinforces the idea that Michael is not a normal man. He's actually four men and one woman or an editor, a production designer, a co-writer, a bandmate who went on to direct The Last Starfighter, a stuntman, and briefly, an actor's face. Which is why he's inspired nightmares for 40 years. That's all we have for this episode of Things You Didn't Know, but tell us what you're dressing up as for Halloween. Nah, don't do that. I was just kidding. And as always, be sure to subscribe to Cinefix for more truish things about movies, and sometimes Tommy Lee, Wallace, right here on Things You Didn't Know. Okay, so that was the end of the video. That was very well done. Um, there was a lot of things I did not know about the movie. Because um, usually most of the time you're just watching it for production value. As well as just watching it just for um, the value of, you know, learning about the movie. So learning about a lot about uh, how to come up with the names for people. And the people that are playing certain characters was very interesting to learn about. So I really appreciate that. So I'm definitely going to give it a thumbs up as well as follow these guys. Because it looks like they have put a lot of work into figuring out a lot of information that we may not have figured out. So again, I'm going to give this a thumbs up. Uh, again, well done. There was a lot of information that was placed in it seven things i thought they were going to start seven on down to one but they started one through seven so that's fine they burst out any way you look at it so i just appreciate that but again those are just my thoughts let me know your thoughts down in the comment section if you liked it if you hated it if you thought it sucked if you thought there's other things that they could have brought up that you might have known about uh, the actual uh, halloween movie so please put that down in the comment section as well as any other suggestions you have for videos you would like me to react to unfortunately i did not have any new subscribers which does happen but it's not the end of the world so i am on my way to 300 subscribers again i am on my way to 300 subscribers but i can't do it without you so if you would like to become a subscriber definitely become a subscriber i really appreciate any new subscribers i get definitely like some videos i appreciate that as well and just know that if you do become a new subscriber you will get a shout out on my next video so i'm going to get ready to end this video of course and if you haven't done already please like comment subscribe and definitely hit that notification bell for when i come out with new videos you guys have a great rest of the day and happy halloween Peace.